morning, Brandon Green. How are you this morning? <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, Adele. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rashida Brunnage, and I'm here with The Daily Shift. Um, I'm here Monday through Friday. I'm going to give you time. Lately, it's been about 7.30, between the 7.30 and the 8 a.m. hour to uh, help you shift in your everyday life, to uh, help you to take a different vantage point of a situation with. Good morning, cousin Marlis. How are you this morning? So we're just going to talk about being uncomfortable. If you haven't shared, go ahead and share. Share. If you haven't invited somebody, go ahead and invite somebody. You have the same opportunities if you're watching the replay. And if you're watching the replay, I thank you for watching the replay. So we've been talking about being uncomfortable, right? We've been talking about being uncomfortable. And today is our Thursday um, topic, which is focus. We want to focus... Uh, about being uncomfortable. Um, I was telling you all the other day, um, Tuesday, about me going to the doctor and the the process of to become healed and it, be, it being uncomfortable. And so um, I had a medicated Uniboot and then I had a wrap on it after they gave me the cortisone shot. And um, I had to wear it for, he told me one day, the nurse told me it's good for up to three days. I wore it, today would have been the third day, around 12 o'clock would have been the third day. So I took it off last night, and it's still sore, right? It's really sore where I had the injection, but when I look at my ankle, my ankle looks so much better. The swelling has gone down on both sides, right, and it looks normal, and, um, it's still sore, it's not as strong as it was, right? But it's in the process of healing. Now, uh, a lot of sometimes we focus on the discomfort or being uncomfortable as tar as opposed to fo focusing on the good points. Case in point. Case in point. My mom had knee surgery a few years ago, and once she fis finished with the knee, went through the pain, went through the rehab, and did all that. That knee was nice, right? It worked really nice, and she was grateful for it uh, being a new knee. But the focus that she has now is the pain that she went through, and she refuses to get the other one done. Yeah, I'm on here telling mama business because she doesn't want to go through the pain because her focus is on the pain and not the outcome. A lot of times we focus on the pain. Now, if I focus on the pain, of uh of getting the shot and the discomfort of having it wrapped and the inconvenience of having it wrapped if i went uh, and focused on the money that i spent on having a quote unquote in office procedure and buying insoles i would have never been in the process of my healing good morning sue how are you and so if we focus on the things that it cost us as opposed to the outcome, a lot of things we would never do. Our deliverance would never come. If you focus on, well, I have to spend more time in prayer. I have to give up some people. I have to give up some things. I have to give up things that my flesh desire. Good morning, Frida. Then you would never experience God in the way that you need to experience him. If you decide that you don't want to come out and be separate and be uncomfortable and you focus on being the odd man out instead of focusing on the closeness that you will have with the father. If you don't focus, if you focus uh, on how it's different than it was before as into I'm going to have a different outcome than I had before, right? Good thoughts, good actions, right? And you don't see the top good results you have god thoughts when you have god's thoughts and you do god actions you get god results and so when you look at the results of a thing the why the purpose that you are trying to accomplish that's where you should focus don't unfo don't focus on being uncomfortable don't focus on how much it hurts don't focus on how bad it seems it's sort of like when you're revamping your financial plan right when you first start a budget it hurts because you're used to spending money until it's gone and then now you have not not necessarily limits but you have other things to do with your that money and things you're going to accomplish with that money and so you have to learn to say no to some things until you learn to you uh start to budget out for those entertainment items you know for birthdays and entertain and budget for movies and budget for um 
some extra um, giving, miscellaneous giving, but it's a process. And if you don't focus on what you want to come out of the process, you're going to stop the process. Just like losing weight, you know, if you uh, focus on, well, I really wanted fried chicken today, but I had fried chicken yesterday, so I'm not going to eat fried chicken today, then... uh you're going to end up eventually going back to fried chicken. But when you focus on, I want to be healthier, I want my cholesterol numbers to be down, I want my blood pressure to be normal, I want my blood sugar to be normal, I feel better, I, I want to be able to live. I don't want to go with mus uh, nerve, uh, go through uh, neuropathy. I don't want to lose the strength of my muscles. I don't want blindness due to diabetes. I don't want to be an amputee. There are some things that you will focus on outside of being uncomfortable, outside of being the only one that's eating more vegetables than they our bread you know there are so many things that we focus on that causes us to lose our hope it causes us to lose our momentum it causes us to lose our way but when you focus on the result then you're able to stay and able to stand good morning Kimberly just like when you're driving a car when you have your fit when you're facing forward you drive in a straight line but when you get distracted and you're looking over to the right side of the car or to the left side of the car then eventually that car starts to go to that side that car tends to go to the left side why because it's following where your focus is and that's how it is spiritually and naturally so we have to keep our eye on the lord good morning felicia we have to keep our eye on the lord we have to keep our focus on the God of our salvation. We have to keep the will of our Father ever before our eyes. Uh, me and uh, my best friend Loretta was talking about, she was talking about how the scripture uh, really blessed her yesterday. Write the vision and make it plain, right? That they that read, uh, write the vision and make it plain. And then he says to write it upon the table so they that, that read it may run with it, right? Good morning, Daddy. And so you take that and you apply it naturally and spiritually. So, what is it that God has set before you that is his will for your life? That's what you focus on. What is it that you're going to accomplish in your life, in your family, that you want your family to do? You write it, you make it plain, and you focus on that. So that when you go forth in your everyday life, then you know um, what it is that you want to accomplish. Good morning, April. Uh, we had this conversation with teenagers a while back. Before You need to know that you uh, want to keep yourself until marriage, right? So you have to make that constitution, you have to make that constitution plain before you even start dating. You need to know why you want to keep yourself before marriage. You want to you want to you want to know how this can be done. These are the things that you focus on. So when you start dating, you won't be led astray and people won't be able to manipulate you or make you lose your focus because you know what it is that you desire to do. It's sort of like when you go to cook dinner, you just don't go in the kitchen and pull everything out the cabinet and then you're like, "Okay, well I'm going to make spaghetti." And then you start making something other than Thank you. You start making uh, something other than spaghetti because somebody uh, came in and and messed up your focus. And so you went from making spaghetti to making macaroni and cheese. But you already got noodles in the pot. You can't allow people to come in and change what it is that you're cooking or fixing. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Happy belated birthday. May you accomplish all that. God. Thank you, April. I appreciate you. And so we have to continue to focus and so on this thursday even when you're uncomfortable when you're doing something you've never done before when god has you walking in a place of him that you've never walked before when you're accomplishing things in your life that you've never accomplished before that even when it's uncomfortable even when you're going at it alone even when nobody understands remember why you started remember your focus remember how it what you're trying to accomplish and what it is and the what the result is that you're looking for right continue to move forward keep your focus keep your eyes on the prize right you know uh and the scripture says i keep my um eye on the prize of the high calling which is in christ jesus right so we have to keep our eye on on what it is that we are trying to accomplish so we don't waver, that we're not tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine, right? That um, when you decided that you were going to build this business this year, that you don't allow what people say or how you feel to deter you from continuing, continuing to build. Because this is how people are. 
they don't have the vision you have. So they don't agree with what you're doing. So you need to accomplish what you're going to accomplish because I promise you once you're done, they're going to say, oh, I'm so proud of you. I didn't even really think you could do it. I didn't fully understand what it was you was trying to do. And then they'll be not just proud of you. They'll be like, yeah, I knew they could do it all along. <laughs> you know, people that have your back and they jump on the bandwagon after you after you went done all the hard work, after you've done all the sacrifices, and after you've done all that you could to accomplish your goals. Not that you're doing it for them, but that's just how people are. So don't allow people to deter you from what it is God is placing in your life. You know, sometimes we don't want to fast and pray because it seems like we're the only one fasting and praying. We don't want to stand up for what is right because it seems like we're the only one standing. We don't want to be the only one that is sacrificing for what it is that, that, we're, that we're focusing on doing. But once you do that, not only will it bring you a result, but it builds a character in you to be able to build a confidence in you, not just in you, but in the plan that God put in you. And to build confidence in you that you know that you hear from God and you know that you're led of God and you know that when you do what it is God has called you to do, that he will... um he will help you to manifest that thing and he will stand with you and he will give you um, ways to get that thing done. Creative ways to solve problems and witty inventions to uh, help you along the way. And so that's what I want to just encourage everybody to do on today is to focus on what it is you're trying to accomplish. Don't, don't get deterred, right? Don't get deterred by how uncomfortable it feels. Don't get sidetracked by how uncomfortable it feels my ankle feels very uncomfortable but when i look at it it looks really good right it feels really uncomfortable but it looks really good and so now you have a plan it's okay it's uncomfortable so what do i do to keep this what do i do to keep the health of my ankle so now i'm like okay well <clears throat> the doctor told me i can do whatever activity i've been doing so, but my, I didn't tell him that I had planned on starting to work out this week. So, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to let this ankle rest and just do my stretches. And then we'll work on that next week, right? Give it time to heal. You know, sometimes you have to adjust your plan to keep your result or to have the result that you're looking for. Lord, we praise and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love, your loving kindness, your tender mercy, your grace, your peace, and your joy. We thank you for watching over us all night long, God. We thank you for giving us godly focus on today. That Not that we will have blinders on, but God, that we will have our focus on you. That we won't allow the enemy to distract us. That we won't allow... Um, things, every win and doctrine to to take us off of the plain path you have set, up, set us on, that we will not be manipulated, God, but that we will continue to walk in the newness of life that you have given us, that we continue to walk in a newness of life that causes us to hear your voice and to be able to accomplish that which you have set before us to accomplish and those dreams and those visions you have placed in our heart and in our minds. And God, we ask you to strengthen us even in when we're uncomfortable, God, that it will bring about um, good character in us, that it will bring about a level of integrity in us, a level of confidence in you in us. God, and we thank you for giving us a new place, oh God, to feel uncomfortable, that it's just somewhere we've never been before, but this place of uncomfortableness will become our new norm, that being stretched by you is our new norm, that being broken by you is our new norm, that being cut and molded by you is our new norm, because we want to be vessels unto honor, and we want your new wine to dwell and new vessels so god continue to make us new continue to make us whole in the name of jesus so god we present our bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you which is our reasonable service we are not conformed to this world but we are transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may know and prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of you in our lives and god and as we prove that thing that we will not be deterred by naysayers or by family members or by past hurts and past pains it may look like something in the past, God, but we expect it to be new because you said it was new. God, we don't uh, go by what it looks like on the outward appearance, but we look at the heart of the matter. We look at what you are saying in the midst of the thing, God, that we will have a spirit of discernment because your Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. Because the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us, that we have a spirit of discernment. 
that we have power and might to overcome the enemy and even to overcome our emotions, to overcome our wayward thinking, to overcome uh, wayward thoughts, oh God, to overcome bad habits of procrastination, oh God, bad habits of avoidance, bad habits, oh God, of, of leaving things undone. But God, as we become finishers in you, as we will become finishers in the spirit and in the natural, oh God, that we will walk in newness of life on today. And God, we glorify you on today. We magnify you and we give you praise because you are worthy. We thank you for those that are here and those that are watching the replay. God, we ask you to meet them where they are. Where they are, God, I can't go where they are, but the Spirit can go where I cannot go, and it can see what I cannot see, and it can reach where I cannot reach. God, so we ask you to touch the heart of these, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give them a spiritual focus, oh God, in the, la <laughs> in the end of this year, oh God, from October through December. Give them a focus, oh God, that would not be broken. Give them a focus, oh God, that will not deter them. Give them a focus, oh God, that they will not see what it is that the enemy is trying to do, but they will be focused on you, that they will not um, <clears throat> waver, they will not fall, and they will not faint. And God, we glorify you on this morning. We magnify you and we give you praise on this morning. God, we ask you to heal those that are sick among us on this morning. Touch sick bodies on today, oh God. Open blinded eyes on today. Unblock arteries on today. Regulate blood pressure and blood sugar on this morning, oh God. No answer to regu regulate cholesterol levels on this morning, oh God. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Touch a heart arrhythmias, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let the regularity of the heart be made on today, oh God, through the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, every immune disease, oh God, we ask you to heal it because the body belongs to you. You are the creator of these bodies. Every mental illness, oh God, you are the keeper of our minds and you are the prince of peace. So bring peace to the minds of those that are mentally ill, oh God, those that are depressed and oppressed and bipolar and schizophrenic, God, those that are, um, those that, um, are psychotic, oh God, those that are, uh, sociopaths, oh God, and psychopaths, you are able to heal them. No, the sadists and the narcissists, you are able to deliver. And we ask you to touch right now in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in the lives of your people. We thank you for being a God that hears and a God that answers prayer. And we glorify you. We magnify you as such on this morning. And we give you glory, oh God. And we give you praise because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for just that hopped on doing the prayer. Hey, cousin Joseph. I saw Danita had hopped on. Wow. Amen. Sorry, Periscope. For some reason, my calendar popped on. I was trying to close it. Anyway. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for watching. Amen. Praise God for the saints hopping on today. Hey, Rochelle, thank you all for watching. I appreciate you for being here. If you're available on Saturday at 10 a.m., we will be at the Eureka Bible Church of God in Christ, 1602 Delaware, Infinite, Michigan, for our annual prayer breakfast breakfast hosted by the mother's board our theme is when you get involved in god's dream he will get involved in yours and i am the speaker so i ask you all to come on out um support the mother's board amen we have a wonderful old church that needs some wonderful old work and so we are doing everything that it is that we're able to do the radio baby will be there adele she's over here on periscope um i think april Cobb will be there because i think she's on uh, program probably to pray. I'm not sure, but we're asking you all to come on out. If you need inf more information, just inbox me or text me, and I will um, be glad to help you. So now I want you to point to yourself and repeat after me and say, I am blessed. I am highly favored. I'm the apple of my father's eye. He is absolutely and positively concerned about me. He thinks that I am the best thing since sliced bread. I can cast my cares on him and know that he cares for me. And that he loves me with an everlasting love. 
So remember that you are blessed. You are highly favored. You are the apple of your father's eye. He is absolutely and positively concerned about you. You are the best thing since sliced bread to him. You can cast all your cares on him and know that he cares for you and that he loves you with an everlasting love. And there's absolutely nothing and no thing you can do about it. Hey, Tika, how are you this morning? Beautiful. Thank you. You all have a beautiful and you all have a blessed day. And I'll see you all back here tomorrow. Have a good one.